All right, so let's talk about a diverging lens. Your diverging lens is actually a concave lens. The surface of the lens that you can see, this is a piece of glass that you can see through, and the surface you can see is concave. But we'll find out that the diverging lens, the concave lens, is gonna go analogous to the convex mirror that we just dealt with. And so if you notice, a convex mirror is sometimes also called a diverging mirror. So this is a diverging lens and diverging mirror, but it's a concave lens versus a convex mirror. So that's the case. So tell me what we learned with this convex mirror. What kind of images do we get with a convex mirror? Upright virtual always? Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter where the object is, you will always get an upright virtual image. We're gonna find out that the same thing is gonna always be true with the diverging lens. So one thing we didn't mention here is with your radius of curvature being on the side of the mirror where you can't see, and the focal distance as well, when you plug your focal distance in for a diverging lens, you have to plug it in as a negative number. It's a negative focal distance when you start doing the, the calculations with the equations. Whereas with the uh, concave mirror, not true. That has a positive focal distance. So same thing's gonna be true with the diverging lens. With the diverging lens, you're also gonna have a negative focal distance. So if they tell you the radius of curvature is 10 centimeters, then your focal distance will be half that five centimeters, but in the equation, it's actually gonna get plugged in as negative five centimeters for either diverging lens or a diverging mirror here. Everybody cool with that? All right. So here, your light rays are getting reflected, and they're getting reflected at different directions due to the curvature here. So, and as a result of getting uh, reflected in different directions, you might really have them converge and form a real image, or they might just appear to have come from a common point, which they really didn't, so you get a virtual image. The same thing's gonna be true with the diverging lens, except instead of reflection, the light's gonna pass through the lens and be refracted instead. And those refracted rays might converge, or they might diverge, and you can guess what's gonna happen with the diverging lens. Same thing happened with the diverging mirror. They always, uh, you know, just diverge from each other. They never actually converge. You never get a real image. You always get a virtual upright image. So in this case, we're gonna draw some of the same lovely rays we did before. First ray we drew was coming in parallel to the principal axis, and where does that one typically get reflected when it was on a mirror? back through the focal point, or at least if it was coming from a focal point. And that's what we're gonna see here is actually as if it were coming from that lovely focal point. It's gonna go there. So the next one we drew was going towards the focal point or through the focal point. In this case, I'm gonna head towards that primary focal point. And where does that one get refracted? Well, with the mirrors, it got reflected back through, or at least it had appeared as if it was coming from the focal point. In this case, it's just gonna come out. So, oh, I'm sorry parallel to the principal axis, and this one's gonna get refracted parallel to the principal axis. And then finally, you could draw another one right to the vertex here, and that one just actually passes straight through altogether. And so we get our three lovely light rays, and are these light rays ever going to converge? No, so we're not gonna get a real image, but these all appear as if they came from a common point right there. Did they really come from that point? No. Is my eyeball gonna be right there to look for it? No, my eyeball is gonna to be totally over on the other side here. So with my eyeball on the other side, I never am gonna see that image as it will, but it appears, the light rays I do see, all appears if they came from that common point. So it's a virtual image, and if it's virtual, what's true? And if you notice that image also forms above the principal axis, does it appear bigger or smaller than my actual object? Smaller, same thing we saw with the convex mirror. Everything is always virtual, upright, and appears smaller than the actual object. Cool?